Hello, I'm going to be telling you all about R and R Studio for the upcoming modules you'll be working with. For these modules, you need to download both R and R Studio to get started. To download R, you're going to go to this website, rproject.org, and you're going to click this link, Download R. You're going to be prompted to a bunch of different rears. Just pick one and click in it, and you're going to come to this page no matter which one you click on. This allows you to download R. So you would just click the particular link that was appropriate for your operating system. Now, R can be a standalone environment, and that works great. But we're going to be using R in an integrated development environment, IDE. So R Studio is also something that you can go and click download. And they have paid versions, but they also have free versions. And I'm going to recommend the free version. Once you download both pieces of software are in our studio, both of which are cross-platform compatible, meaning that regardless of whether you have a Mac, a PC, or a Linux machine, it will work. Then we can go ahead and open our R Studio environment. So you would just click this link to download, and then you would pick your particular operating system. Again, Windows, Mac, or Linux. Now, once you have both of these installed on your system, then you can open up R Studio, and it'll launch R by default. Let me take you there now. So the first time you open up our studio, you're gonna see something like this. So let me get you comfortable in this environment before you get started on the modules that you're working with. So here we have the R console. The R console is typically where you type your commands. So we have up here the R version that we'll be working with and yours might be a little different than what I'm showing here. All of the R versions have a numerical version as well as some name, which are fun names. And then a bunch of language here. Anything in blue with this greater than symbol, that's your command prompt. And that's where you would type your commands. So for example, I can use this like a calculator and type in one plus one and press enter, and I'll get the answer too. You'll notice up here, we now have something in our history tab. So we have different tabs in this part of the field up here. This is our history tab. And our command that we typed here, once we pressed enter, not only gave us the result of that equation, but it also sh shows up here in our, our history tab. We can double click anything from our history and it'll launch back to our console and we can run it again. Okay, now this is a really great way of keeping track of some of the commands you used. However, what I'm going to recommend is actually using what's called an R script. So up here, you'll see I hover over and I see new file. You're going to click this drop down menu. And you're going to see a lot of different options. You're going to pick the first one called R script and click on it. Now you'll notice that we've gone from a three tab sort of area to four. So now we have this fourth area that's opened up here, and this is our R script. So we can type our commands, one plus one here, and then we can click this button to run it to the console down here. And you'll see that it runs over here and it loads in our history tab here. You can actually save your history to a file but it's much cleaner to save this because when you're just getting up started and you're learning, you're gonna type a lot of commands that are gonna go in your history that don't actually work. So if you save your history, you're saving not just the parts that work, but the parts that didn't work. Putting all of the stuff that does work into your script and saving that is much better. Now, similar to working with a word processing software like Word, um, you'll notice that when you have an unsaved file, the file is read up here. So we can click this save button here and save this um, file as a name. So for example, myfirstscript.r. So all of these will have the file extension .r, letting you know that it's an R file. All right, so let's look at a couple of other things. So we also have this tab here, which is for the environment. So one of the things that you might wanna do is store something like this into a variable. Let's say we wanna store it into x and we run that. So now it's gonna show up in our history. See, we added the X equals, so that's part of our history. And in our environment tab, that X variable is now loaded here. And it's gone ahead and done the math to show us that the value of X is two. We can also do this with other types of variables. So for example, one of the data sets that's built into R is called the Anscombe's Quartet. So we can say Y equals Anscombe. You'll notice as I'm typing, we get this nice drop down menu of all the different options, right? This is the one that I want. It has a little icon that looks like a table. 
And it also has this really nice description here on the screen of what this is. So I'm going to click that, and then I'm going to click Run. And now, again, it goes down to my console, but it's also over here. Now, if I click this, what it's going to do is launch over here in this tab. So I still have my script. I didn't lose it. But I also can sort of visually see this um, tabular data set that I've just loaded and stored in this value of x, or sorry, y. I also see this new command down here in my console. I didn't type view y, but when I clicked on it, that's basically what R was executing. And so here, instead of opening this as a file in something like Excel, I can actually view it here in this integrated development environment. So one thing that you want to do when you're looking at data is not just visually inspecting it, but also exploring it with graphs. So we can do a histogram, for example, of this variable, Anscom, and we need to pick a specific vector within that. And you'll learn all of these terms in the modules. And we can run this here. Again, it'll plot to our command console down here. And then we start to see this plots tab appearing as a graph. Now you can click zoom and it'll launch it in a new window that you can make full screen and you can adjust. Okay, you can export it as an image, a PDF, or copy it to your clipboard to paste into say um, a homework assignment. Um, all of these different tabs you'll notice have a little broom. So if I click it here, I'll clear all of my plots. Now it's a safe environment, meaning if you click something that you might not have meant to click, always going to give you a warning. Are you sure you want to clear all of your plots from your history? No, I'm not sure. And I can click no. You also have one down here, you'll notice. Now that one didn't ask me before clearing my console. I can also clear my environment. This one's going to ask me first, and I'm going to say no, I don't want to do that. Okay, so there's a way to kind of clean up. You can also clear your history. You'll see a little broom there. So basically, anytime you see a broom, you'll know that means to clear whatever that tab is. Now let's look at some of these other tabs down here. So we also have a files tab. This is really great for being able to look at the files that are in your particular directory. And you can also set your working directory here by choosing a particular directory on your computer where you wanna do your working for this particular module. Once you have that, you would click on the files tabs and it would show you all of the different files that you have in that directory. This other tab is for loading packages. So R is just a gateway to a ton of different um, possibilities. And many of these possibilities come in the form of packages. These packages are things that other people have written that add into R and, and add to what it can do. Um, in order to use those packages, you have to first install them, and then you have to load them into your working space. And then sometimes you might have packages that need to be updated. All of that can be managed right here from this tab. Now, you might be wondering, what are all these commands she typed up here? So the nice thing is you have this really nice help tab, and this is all the documentation you need. No need to go to Google, you have it right here. So we typed in the command hist, I can type that here. Oh, that's for histograms. So that's gonna make a plot of the given data values, okay? And it tells you all of the different options that you can use for plotting a histograms to make them however you want, okay? We also typed the command ANSCOM, so I can copy that and I can paste it here. And I can see, oh, okay, this is identical simple linear regressions. So that's what that data set is. How would I use that? Oh, I can pull out X1 and it's just one column. That's what we did here to look at the column one histogram. So this is a really nice way to um, read about a particular command that you might be using and learn more about its functionality. So hopefully through this video, I've given you a lot of um, exposure to the different types of functionality that you can get through RStudio, the integrated development environment that we'll be working with for this assignment.